Creativity in the Age of COVID with Dr. Judy Bloom and Richard Skipper. It's the only program in which therapy and entertainment come together to show everyone not only how to cope in the age of COVID, but how to be creatively productive through it all. And now, Dr. Judy Bloom and Richard Skipper. Happy New Year, everyone. And happy new year to you too, Judy. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Richard? Happy I'm new year. I'm doing great. You know, we last met 14 days ago, and I don't know about you, but I already feel that we're halfway through this year. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been amazing what the last nine days have held. Did you have a nice holiday, first of all? Um, I did. I had a very quiet, you know, like everyone else that's observing uh the restrictions that we're all under, but it was, it was lovely. Actually. I really, I really enjoyed it. And you. Now uh, I know I had a wonderful holiday. I, it was very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I, we've been together 31 years and this was the first year that it was just the two of us. Normally we have a big party and, you know, but it was great to start the year on a quiet reflective yeah. uh, this year. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what it became for me. Um, I begin these shows, uh, first of all, I want to mention today marks 308 days since yeah. the theaters shut down. Yeah. And of course, that means the restaurants in the area. I mean, when I'm uh, talking about the theaters, not only is it Broadway, but it's off-Broadway, and it's off-off-off-Broadway, and it's regional theaters, and it's crucial. <laughs> It's all across the board, uh, but uh, there is hope. The vaccines are rolling out. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully uh, they will pick up some momentum and we'll get going. I'm very excited about today's show uh, because I have uh, three incredible creative people that are from three different areas of creativity. Mm -hmm. um, our first, I will bring on uh, Stephen Foster, We've known each other quite some time. Some of you may know him by his book, Awakening the Actor Within, uh, which uh, is one of my favorite uh, theater books. Um, and uh, he also has a musical called Green Room the Musical, uh, which he will talk about. Uh, Stephen, meet Dr. Bloom, and thank you for joining us. Hello, Dr. Bloom, and hello, Richard. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we're thrilled that, thrilled that you're here. Um, I want to begin, um, as I was just saying before we brought, brought you on, uh, today marks 308 days since our theaters have shut down. And I want to begin by asking what your calendar looked like on March 11th of last year, before uh, everything here in New York began to shut down. Well, I had... Um a production of my play Legends of Bridge that was gonna go up in London. I had several productions of uh, The Green Room um, about to go up, um, also another one in London, and also other ones throughout the country. And uh, Chuck and I were also, my partner Chuck Pelletier and I- Will you be meeting a little later in the show? Um, he, we were about to start filming our um, follow-up to our film, That's Opportunity Knocking. and. All of that just, the breaks just went on every single one of those. All the shows were canceled or postponed. And uh, the acting, of course, in LA just dried up nothing. Mm -hmm. And so it, it put everything into like a, a kind of a halt and a kind of a free fall for everybody because the industry that Chuck was in, the industry that I was in, uh, our, our quote unquote day jobs, drew, uh, you know, those dried up as well. So we found ourselves just with this vast savanna of isolation and time, which is like, if I didn't have the tools that I have um, from um, the artist's way and from my own book, I would definitely be like fumbling mm -hmm. and like in like a major stall but luckily I have tools and stuff that I use mm -hmm. that help me to stay active and afloat. So that was my calendar and kind of how I dealt with it at the same time. Well, I was gonna ask you how many of those tools have you found that you're actually acclimating into your life, probably more so than at any other point in your life and career? 
Well, absolutely. Um, I found that I, um, I'm writing more. I found that I'm actually, uh, Julie Cameron in The Artist Way talks about something called creative U-turn. And that's where you've actually left projects behind or you've stalled on your career or something has happened. And I consider this like a major creative U-turn for myself and I'm sure for everybody else. And I found that I was able to go back and pick up a lot of those old scripts and re rework them and send them out. So it kind of was after I got over the shock and all that of everything, I was actually able to use a lot of my tools to actually move forward as opposed to getting into a major depression. And I will preface this by saying in, in 2019, I lost my dad and I lost a dear, dear friend of mine, Sorry. which actually put me on a situation where I was already feeling really kind of post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. So it, it was double hard for me to keep pedaling mm -hmm. and, and not go into that rabbit hole of, oh, this is, I, I can't handle this thing so that so creativity for me what is very therapeutic and i was able to use this time to isolate and create more plans mm -hmm. Stephen, what do you think you're going to carry with you um as we go forward and as the theaters begin to open up again and real life starts to come back again what tools that and and things that you've learned during this past almost a year do you think you're going to rely on going forward and bring with you? Discernment. Mm -hmm. What's important, what's not important? What will I engage in? What won't I engage in? Uh, what What do I really want to focus my attention on? Uh, like for me, we had our musical produced um, at the end of 2019 off Broadway mm -hmm. and it was a good success but it still, it still brought me to the situation where I want to focus more on TV and film mm -hmm. because I live in Los Angeles and I've been doing a lot of theater through the years. So it sort of put me in the situation of what do I really want to do? So oh, excuse me, you're in Los Angeles now? I am in Los Angeles right now. I can wow. see the Hollywood sign outside my window. <laughs> oh, good for you. <laughs> So it sort of made me look at my priorities. What's important to me? What type of acting do I want to do? What type of writing do mm -hmm. I want to do? And so, you know, for me, it's a matter of looking at everything and going, what, what are my priorities? And I think that's been a good mm -hmm. reflection for me this year. That's great. Well, I want to bring on our next guest, uh, David Mayoko, and I have known each other for a long, long time. Uh, David was my musical director uh, for many, many years. As a matter of fact, we both won Mac Awards together uh, for a show that we worked on. Uh, and in recent years, um, David also has been performing not only a one-man show um, as Liberace, believe it or not, uh, but he also does a show called Lee Squared uh, with Chuck Squ uh, Sweeney uh, playing Peggy Lee, get the Lee Squared. Um, and they've been traveling around as well. So I know David's story very well. He was a guest on my solo show a few weeks ago. But David, I want to ask you uh, the same question that I began with Stephen. Uh, what did your calendar look like uh, when everything shut down? Well, thanks for having me, Richard and Dr. Judy Bloom. It's great to be here. It um, it was probably the most exciting and um, promising calendar mm -hmm. I've seen since I started doing Liberace and start and since Chuck Sweeney and I had started doing Lee Squared. You know, we started back in 2016. That's when I first started doing the character and. Chuck, you know, join me. Peggy Lee at the door. Don't let her in. I know. Oh, <laughs> is that your doorbell? Everyone has the oh, same no. room tone, I think. Oh, <laughs> she doesn't even know where she is right now. So it's all good. good. Um, but you know, we had we had worked very hard. We've played to very small houses. You know, we we always joked that if anybody needed to do a show and have the 
socially distanced audience with maybe like 20, 30 people in a big theater, we could do it. We were we played to the smallest houses for a while and we just started to get booked a lot of places. We were going to be, we started to be in San Francisco, in LA. Um, we played in Puerto Vallarta together um, in 2019. And then I continued doing a solo run there. And uh, so many, because of Liberace's 100th birthday in uh, 2019 and Peggy Lee's, actually Liberace got a little bit more celebration than Peggy did because hers was 2020 and uh, a lot of concerts, things that were at uh, uh, the, the Jazz at Lincoln Center, things like that were planned. Those all got shut down. Our trips to uh, the Midwest and everything got, got shut down. So we finally had this sort of promise on the horizon for an act mm -hmm. that we love so much. It's very personal and dear to us, but we also understood the, you know, the realities of doing a cabaret show, you know, on a sometimes shoestring budget. And uh, yeah, everything just sort of, I got back from Puerto Vallarta from doing a month in February. Chuck and I both played uh, the Birdland Theater on March 10th. And I remember greeting the audience afterwards and we were deciding, do we touch? Do we hug? What do we do? You know, we had just come up because Chuck's a really funny, brilliant guy. And he said, okay, Lee, when we meet on stage, we're not gonna hug. We're gonna do mm, 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 bang, bang, boom, boom. It was, so we had already known that we were headed that way, but we really didn't know that it was gonna be just a few days later that it was over. So that was, there were gigs all the way through the summer, residencies in Provincetown, and stuff and obviously as we all know that story done gone right well one of the reasons that i wanted to bring you on today david and i'm glad that you're here is that you really made lemonade out of those lemons uh, because you have taken your work online uh you have a virtual show that i think is every sunday every night. sunday at 6 30 uh, yeah every sunday you have your liberace show and you also have virtual piano bar so if you can talk about those both shows and uh, those both shows uh, and and how you're getting I get that. Yes. And how you're getting um, uh, your audience is actually growing as yeah. a result of the pandemic. It, uh, thank you. It is. It is sort of lemonade from lemons a little bit. Um, I, unlike many of our friends, Richard, all of our friends, our performers, our Broadway actors, I am cursed and blessed to have still a day job that uh, never quit. I work, I manage a dermatology practice. Mm. So I never, you know, we lost salary, we lost hours. It became very difficult to keep that going with telehealth and fit, you know, navigating that. Mm. Um, but I was so happy to still have an income and be able to donate to places like the Actors Fund and all my friends who were, had nothing else, you know, performing, catering, everything that all these businesses that we, when we're doing that full time have, and they were all gone. So I had a little bit of a different experience going into it. Um, it also required me to work full time at this dermatology practice and figure out what I was gonna do to keep my creativity and my momentum going and really to keep sharp. You know, I mean, you, you stop doing it and it, it goes, that muscle gets rusty very quickly when you stop. Um, but I just decided I was going to do some online shows with my, you know, iPhone and uh, my husband, Chris would follow me around the house in my costumes. Mm -hmm. I play here and play there. And it was very early on, um, you know, that people were doing this and uh, it was, it, it was very successful. I didn't ask for tips. I didn't take things. And some people who run this, uh, platform called Virtual Piano Bar had been watching me. I had been promoting them. I had been donating to them and said, hey, we'd like to take you on and do this weekly Liberace show program. Um, and I thought, hey, th you know, that's great. And I, everything I made, every, all the donations, the kind donations, um, I donated to, again, things like Actors Fund and Artists Out of Work because I was still blessed to have this awful, sorry guys, day job, um, which again, blessing now. But, you know, I I really thought it was going to be 
um, a time to sort of rethink and reimagine and sort of work on parts of my act. And what it turned out being was really a marathon, like a hamster in a wheel. Hmm. I've never worked harder in my entire life um, for less money, but that's okay because what I got from it is is mm -hmm. way more valuable than the dollar sign, you know, that I could have made. I, you know, I, I learned that we can be creative. We can keep thriving and flourishing. Some people don't like to perform and sing on the virtual thing. I get that. It's hard with, you know, a camera and you and no response. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I've learned that connection with an audience doesn't necessarily have to be in that same room, you know, and I uh, realized that there are a lot of people at home and just bringing joy to people um, at home and doing this has been done wonders for me, but I've never learned more music in my entire life trying to do something fresh mm -hmm. every week. I can't do, you know, learn a show and then do a run of it, which I really miss. I love doing a run. Mm -hmm. I love that, but it's, it's a new run every week. So I, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned that if you really put your mind to anything and you follow what's here, it's you're kind of unstoppable if you really just if you go there. You got to go there. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bloom, anything you'd like to weigh in before we bring our next guest on? Well, you know, it, 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 a challenge is just uh, an opportunity to do more. That's really what it is. And taking on that creative challenge, I think, is is the only way to survive and thrive. You know, something that you mentioned and you were talking about, you know, all of these people who were suddenly out of work and had no income, right? whereas you at least had something coming in. Um, and Jason Farago uh, in the New York Times wrote a brilliant article the other day um, talking about the need for a, a, a new deal, um, but a federal cultural works program mm -hmm. and really treating artists and musicians and writers and performers as essential workers and you know, making them eligible for unemployment and really changing how we see uh, the role of artists in our lives. You know, they are how we all you know, thrive and they provide catharsis for all of our experience in life and really valuing that like we value other things um, and putting that, uh, you know, giving that a new priority and creating, you know, a, a, doc, a Dr. Fauci of culture. <laughs> yeah, I think people are missing it. They really are missing it. And even the ones that don't know how much they're missing it are starting to feel it. You know, it really is so important mm -hmm. to just, just life, right? Absolutely. Well, when I asked Stephen to come on the show, um, he, of course, suggested that he bring uh, his partner and collaborator, Chuck Pelletier, on. And I thought it would be great to have him come on to talk about the collaborative process when two people are working together on certain projects, but they're not able to be physically together. Uh, at least I'm assuming, Chuck and Stephen, uh, that you have not been physically together. Chuck, first of all, thank you for being here. And same thing with you. I know that you're a writer, you're a producer, um, beyond the work that you do with Stephen. Uh, but what was your calendar like prior? I know the things that you had in addition to working with Stephen, but what did your calendar look like when uh, everything shut down? Um, well, well, first off, uh, just a clarification, uh, Stephen Foster and I are married. Um, and we have... Uh, well, I didn't know that. Is my audio okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, we've been together. We've been married for 21 years. Wow. So, well, I learned something uh, new today. <laughs> um, I. So so we uh, we live together and collaboration for us uh, is um, uh, part of our lives. Uh, and at breakfast this morning, we were saying funny things to each other. So we're writing pretty much all day long. But in answer to your question, uh, on the, um, in, at that part of my uh, year last year, uh, I was currently um, working uh, for the last musical music director for Princess Cruises. 
And uh, so for um, for this. I think we lost him, but I think the problem, Stephen, are you, your mic is muted? Are you in the same space? Yeah, just <laughs> come on over. Yes, it may be if I just sit here. No, that, that's perfect. Uh, it, uh, it's good to be together. <laughs> I am so sorry about that. I don't know what Surprise. happened. There. No, it may be uh, the fact that you've got two computers going from the same venue that's causing maybe. that. Gosh, we've never we've done so many of these and we've never had this problem. So I apologize. <laughs> no, it's fine. Thank you. So, uh, I, I, did you catch all that? So, I'm the vocal music director for Princess Cruises. The cruise industry stopped. Uh, and uh, I was put on furlough until I'm told we'll be back in action in May. But uh, the irony of this entire situation for me has been that I um, work for Princess as the vocal music director, but I'm not creatively involved with Princess at all. I'm just a vocal music director. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, um, mm -hmm. uh, the, this uh, COVID mm -hmm. disaster has been a terrible thing for um, the world. Uh, but I have to say it's been for me as an artist, um, I dare say a hundred percent positive because I had enough money to, uh, to just decide to concentrate on my creativity. Um, and that which used to be done in between, uh, cruises in between days at princess has, uh, moved to being front and center of my life. Um, and, there has also been uh, no, sadly, no time to go have dinners and lunches with other people. And yet that creates, has created for me sort of uh, um, Franz Schubert in an attic sort of situation. <laughs> I love that. I'm either uh, writing a script with this character over here who's... <laughs> Who, who barely makes it into the camera. <laughs> we'll try to, <laughs> uh, so we're, we're either looking at um, a, a project that we've done. Uh, I'm also a film director. So uh, we decided to just start to work on our next film uh, or sitting at the piano and creating. I'm currently writing the music for a um, children's show at, for Circle on the Square. So now, it's, been, it's been positive for me. Dr. Bloom? No, I, I think that's terrific. Again, you know, you pivoted, right? You know, you, you found a way to make lemonade out of lemons. You just, you know, pivoted and said, okay, well, this isn't working. Let's do something else. And, you know, we'll still use these same skill sets um, just in a, in a slightly different way. And I want to point out that you had to go to the green room in order to get better reception. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> But, you know, the fact that we're seeing the two of you together brings up a very interesting point. So I'm going to go um, steer off for just a little bit, but it's still on subject. And I'm going to bring this to you too, David, in a moment. But you are two very creative people living together under the same roof, dealing with the restrictions of COVID. You know, it was uh, right after uh, this all began, I think it was 51 days into this, there was an article in one of the papers uh, where this couple who had been together for years said they could no longer live together because mm -hmm. they were together 24 seven. Mm -hmm. So with the fact that both of you are creative types, uh, obviously you collaborate together, but you also have your own niches of what you do separately. What's the secret for the two of you in terms of not climbing the walls? Or perhaps you do climb the walls. No, no, no. Well, I shouldn't speak for him. I'm just speaking for me. But um, this guy has so many personalities. He's so much fun. Nine times out of 10 when he's speaking, I'm laughing at what he says. So, I mean, I, I could bump it up to 25.8. I could do wow. 6.9. Wow. I mean, I just, we love being Very with sweet. Him. And yes. I'd rather be with him than anybody else in the whole world. Uh, and if I had to be on a desert island, they always say, uh, you know, this is it. But I'll let you ask that question. That. That's great. He might give you a whole different answer. <laughs> well, we do create together. And uh, one of the things that we've been doing is pulling our scripts out and um, reworking them. And um, what what can be challenging to the creative process is when you are in the same room and you can't leave, 
Um, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's almost like we, we went to Amsterdam and we went to the Anne Frank house and that those, those quarters mm. were so tight and that's how it can be with living with someone. But Chuck is, is so musical and we work on our scripts together. Even when we're not working on them, we're talking mm. about them. So what, what has happened is we actually were able to talk more. We were actually able to spend more time together, quality time together, as opposed to getting up, rushing to work, um, going to meet someone for dinner. All those social obligations that we had, we did, weren't pressed to do that. And it actually, as Chuck mm. said, it actually freed up a lot of our time, <clears throat> which was inevitably gobbled up by in too many people, too many things to do just because you feel obligated. And working with Chuck is always fun because we have so many scripts, so many ideas that we never can get to because we're so busy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of our scripts actually, um, speaking of COVID, it actually got picked up, um, a little show called uh, The Little Johnny Dickens Show got picked up by a small theater company um, called Dramatically Incorrect up in Lowell, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. They do God. virtual theater. And they actually did the green room. And I sent the the script of this little short comedy to the director. And he said, oh, my God, let's produce it. And it, like, shocked me. And Chuck and I had to sit down. And he wrote some songs for it. And I we wrote some new um, lines for it. So we actually we're lucky because we get along so well That's now great. if we were a couple I, um you know we're like ruth gordon ruth gordon <laughs> and, um, and garson canaan <laughs> because we work so our ears are so our sense of humor mm -hmm. and the way we view life is so um together and and we almost have the same language which I think is good because we don't drive each other bats with little trivial things. You know, we don't, oh, you didn't take out the trash. You didn't do the laundry. Uh, you know, the vac the vacuuming hasn't been done. You know, we sort of live like two like artists in a garret. You know, we just kind of don't worry about that stuff and the arts are number one thing. So that's how we get along. That's great. And David, no, I'm, I'm curious if you also are able to create some alone time for each of you, or is that something that, that isn't even an issue? It's it's not an issue, but I will say I'm an early riser. Mm -hmm. I get up at like 4 or 5 a.m. He gets up about 6, 7, 8, depending on how well he slept. Right. And so I'm able to create my alone time at the beginning of the day and do my morning pages and get my meditation in. I'm able to go on my walk around the block and, and I'm able and to do my exercise, my Jane Fonda in the garage. <laughs> and I get mine at the end. So and it's plenty. And you and you get yours as well? Chuck? I get mine at the end. At the and end. sometimes yeah. I'll go for walks during the day as well. But right. uh and and uh like uh, this today I was working on a, a um a, a song that has nothing to do with him. So I just go into the, the bedroom and I'm working on the song while he's doing whatever he's doing, making I, trouble. Yeah, you know. I just find that, you know, psychically we all need a, a, some alone time. And yeah. him, he gets his in the morning, I get mine at night. Yeah. yeah. And, and I will also say to him at some point during the day, oh, I need to go put on my headphones and I need to go do my writing practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and he'll go <laughs> work on the computer and I'll sit at my desk and and do my my writing practice. That's right. true, isn't? It? Well, yeah. there, there'll be two three hours in the day sometimes mm -hmm. when we don't even talk to each other much. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. David, same thing with you. You are in a relationship. Uh, you and your partner husband have been in, together. Yeah. He's also a dancer, but he is also uh, crossed over, and is very much a part of your show and the work that you do. Yeah, he, he is. It's it's um first of all, God, you guys, Stephen and Charles, that's inspirational. You guys, you know, that, that's its own, that's its own show. I think everybody, um, most couples during COVID could uh benefit from hearing your words there. 
And I'm believing you too. I'm actually believing you. (laughs) So you want 25, eight. And I think with Chris, my husband and I, 23, six would be perfect. (laughs) (laughs) He might even agree. I was talking about. Yes. (laughs) And interestingly enough with, with Chris and, and, I'll address that after, but Chris and I actually not only, so we're, we live together. Um, I actually have him working at the dermatology practice with me as well. So day work, come home, we're together all the time. And, um, you know, I am one of those people that I need, I need my alone time very much. I always, I I like being alone, but I don't like being lonely as most people probably, you know, feel the same, but I just need that hour or two of my own space. And, um, and Chris, Chris is great. He can just be with people 24 seven. He's really just happy to do it. So we had to work on the sort of alone time bit and, um, I, we found a really good way. In fact, he's downstairs taking a Pilates lesson mm-hmm. on uh, on Zoom right now, and I'm up here having a wonderful time. If I wasn't here with you, I'd probably be eating something, and he'd be doing exercise. So there's a little <laughs> alone time, <laughs> COVID separation. Um, but he's been so wonderful and helpful in my show. He has actually become a, a character in my Liberace shows, he's like nice Scott Thorson. Um, and in my David Variety shows, he's people people ask for him. And I have to say that another beautiful thing that came out of this pandemic and COVID, um, like, like you guys, like it really, we focused on our artistic visions. Um, what we that we all know what we don't have and we don't have a lot of things and a lot of places and a lot of things but um you know we have each other I'm so grateful that we have each other you know there are people that are just alone who yeah. are, are feeling very bad and i and i love reaching out to them online but we have he's been so helpful to me and we've come to a point where, and it took some time, um, where we are kind of thinking the same way. And uh, he, God bless him, I, I don't know that I could live with me um, all the time. I really don't. He has been so wonderful. He's so supportive when we do our my shows. Um, and you know, Richard, you do this all the time. You have your beautiful studio set up and you have your gold for 2021 background, which is gorgeous and but it's work even if you're just sitting in front of your computer there's a lot of work Mm -hmm. getting ready for these online shows you know and and they're stressful especially if you're performing and doing something new every week like you know like i said i'm doing and he's been such a calming anchor for me he's learned how to do tech um he never thought as a ballet dancer he'd learn how to do tech but he knows how to put microphones and cables and turn things on um, well, and you know, excuse me for interrupting. I've said yeah. this before, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, to all the tech people out there, and I can speak for all of us, we really Cheers. appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah for anybody who doesn't know what's involved in it, yes, yeah. absolutely. And uh, you know, and I actually I did tech at Don't Tell Mama for a while too, yes, and I I learned more about the business doing, you know, doing that. And I I always felt like everybody, uh, music directors, directors, performers should all have that moment where they, you know, do that part of it. They're very, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, they, they can, they can make or break you be nice to them always, but, but it's really, really a a lot of uh, responsibility um, supporting the show and making it look good. And Chris has learned to do that for me. And, um, just our relationship has changed with this. You know, we've learned to give ourselves those couple of hours. He'll go for a run. Um, I'll go for a drink. No, I, you know, I, 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 I got music to work on. I got to stay inspired. Um, I will say I, I did stop exercising a lot because I'm at the piano a lot of the time. And I want to learn to balance that a little bit more. We'll ask Dr. Judy for some advice on that, but 
but I, you know, I, it, it's amazing to really look at your relationship, look at the things mm -hmm. that are important, look at your friends, look at the people who mean something, look at people you don't know mm -hmm. and what they're going through and think about, you know, people, what can you do? What can you do that, that, that will help us all get through it instead of just, you know, get through yourself. So yeah. learned a lot that way. And, and I, I really, I, I thank my husband, Chris, and uh, he's really been the inspirational uh, support for me. Every time I think I can't keep doing this, I, I can't keep doing these virtual shows. They're killing me. They're killing me. They're killing me. And he's like, they're not, they're actually sustaining you. Use your you focus know? as well. Yeah. 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 So and David, you're talking about, you know, having gratitude for what we do have, right? You know, and appreciating, you know, uh, how fortunate we are to have our partners in our lives, to have a, a way to make it through during these times, to have some kind yeah. of, of financial wherewithal to do it, you know, all of those things that are so important. And, and that is key. And then finding ways to give back to those who don't have what we have, um, yeah. also really key. And in, as far as the exercise is concerned, you got to schedule it in. It's the only way it happens. You got to put it on the book in your calendar this time of day on these days, and that's it. And there's no excuses. I mean, put the thing on your, you know, mirror. What there is no excuse, right? You know, right on the calendar. There is no excuse. Only way to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna these these stay right. Your videos stay in perpetuity, right, Richard? Yeah. <laughs> whether we whether we want our virtual shows to stay or not, they stay. So I'm gonna take yeah. that clip from Dr. Judy. I'm gonna go. put it on there and play it every morning. <laughs> every morning there's your mantra. Uh, I want to ask you um, what you know. We've gone through a lot. It's hard to believe here we are going into what will soon be year two with all of this. Um, what have you been able to, and you pretty much touched upon this earlier, but what have you really been able to embrace as far as this new change in your life? And what do you find that you're still resisting at this point, if anything? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I have to say, I think one of the biggest blessings for me through this is that I'm actually doing a show as me once in a while. You know, I, I know Richard, I worked with you and Tommy Femia and Steven Brinberg and uh, Chuck Sweeney, and uh, we can name the list. I, I was the, the, the music director to the stars or reasonable facsimiles. That was what Sidney Meyer called me, but, it was very hard for a lot of people to step out of the character, mm -hmm. to step mm -hmm. out from there. You were absolutely fabulous at it. And I, I and what you've done, what you've become, what you've created, you know, outside of Carol Channing is spectacular. And it's very scary. You know, it's very scary to think people want to just see me. Mm -hmm. They're interested in just me and I can just be me. Um, and I learned that through this. And, and the, the great guys, John Richardson and uh, Jonathan Hawkins at Virtual Piano Bar were the ones who said, how about a David Mayako show like once a month? It, you know, just just you. And, you know, it, uh, wow, wow. You know, I was terrified. My first one went about 20 minutes too long and, you know, trying to pull it all together, you know, shape it. Um, but that was one of the most amazing things that came out of it. I think we all have to look at ourselves. We, or we were all kind of forced to look at ourselves a little bit uh, closer and either hide or charge forward into it, you know, right. but. And what about you, Chuck? Uh, I mean, what, what have you been able to embrace and what do you find that you're still resisting? Well, Stephen and I had done a lot of traveling, um, especially lately because I wrote and directed this film that he was the star of that's opportunity knocking. Uh, and we got into a lot of film festivals. Uh, and you want to support those festivals. So I think we were in like 19 European countries in three years. Wow. Or something. Wow. It was kind of, kind of a nutty schedule, but we loved every minute of it, like darn near every minute of it. Um, 
And plus, on top of that, I work for Princess Cruises. So it's, oh, can you fly to Japan right after you get back from the Amsterdam Film Festival? So I had done so much traveling mm -hmm. that I think that's one of the reasons I love being here. <laughs> um, and, and, and it, so it made me, to answer your question, it made me really value when you can travel, travel. Mm -hmm. Like, go crazy. Don't worry about doing too little of that because here you, you know, you never know when something like this is going to come up or, or other physical limitations. So uh, I, I guess I learned to, you know, once this thing opens up again, I will really value that travel and, and mm -hmm. do as much of it as I can. Um, uh, what have I, you know, the, the main thing I've learned from it is that uh, I don't, previous to this, give myself enough time for, for creativity. Um, uh, it, it's a wonderful thing to be able to get up on Tuesday, work on the script that we're working on right now, get up on Wednesday, work on that same script, and then and then do some shooting for a movie. We, uh, we decided to change around a movie so that he's playing several a little short film that I'm working on. I'm having him play several of the characters, so I don't get any germs from anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so now he's, you know, so we get to do that in the afternoons. Yeah, it, it's uh, that I, I, I need to do more of that in my life. I get too much, too tied up in too many other things, um, and I put creativity gets put on the back burner. So I guess the answer to your question is to put creativity up to the front burner. That's great. And Stephen, I want to, you know, bring up something that you mentioned earlier. For those out there who don't know the Artist Way by Julia Cameron, which is my Bible. I do my morning pages every morning. Uh, I do my walks. I do all of those. Uh, I'm assuming that you both do, Stephen and Chuck. Um, it it really has changed my life as far as creating a artistic structure to my life. Um, and I want to ask you as far as creating structure in your life uh, in the midst of a pandemic, when a lot of us don't know had a plan far in the future anymore. And perhaps that's a blessing and a curse for all of us right now. Well, I'll just quote what uh, Judy Bloom said um, to, to uh, David. You have to schedule it in. To me, uh, creativity is not airy-fairy. It's not something you do when you're in the mood. It's, it's very, very much, uh, you can flip it on and flip it off like a switch. And you can sit down and do a lot of work just by going, all right, for from one to two, I'm going to work on the little Johnny Dickens script. Mm -hmm. and, you, and if you write that in your calendar, odds are you're going to do it just like you go and do your, your Jane Fonda, you know, at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very pragmatic about um, scheduling when I'm going to do something. I write down lists. So I don't go through my day aimless and Great. frantic. I, I go through it just, all right, at 1 o'clock I need to do this. At 2 o'clock I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And they say, I don't know, Judy, you might, might know more about this, but they say that's a good way to battle depression mm -hmm. is to actually have a schedule as opposed to getting up, not taking a shower. Mm -hmm. But that's what I've been doing, and I'm very regimented. I'm lucky I was raised by a, a, a full blood German lady. Um, <laughs> and it was all about. You have a schedule, yes. She was all about breakfast is this time, make the beds is this time, sweep the floors this time, uh, one life to live is this time, <laughs> this time crocheting my um, squares for my foot is at this time and dinner is at this time and that's how i learned my schedule I, that's kind of i would say i wouldn't say it's in my dna but it's embroidered in me because i loved her example mm -hmm. and that's how i live my life i'm i'm very i wouldn't say i'm regimented but when i know when something gets done and i also love to highlight my on my list i love to highlight when I've done something, because I'm like, okay, I've done something today. Yeah, check it off, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and we have to be careful about not, not over-regimenting ourselves, too. You know, you can swing too far in the other direction. But yes, you know, if 
it's it's about structure you know, and we we all do better with a little bit of structure and i tell patients all the time you know find something that you can commit to don't make it huge baby steps right don't say i'm going to do this for an hour if all you're really going to be able to do is 15 minutes say i'm going to do it for 15 minutes that's fine just do the 15 minutes so you know it's really about holding yourself accountable to yourself and understanding that that is truly self-care. Mm -hmm. right? We make a commitment to us. And, and that, that that's really the only way that anything happens in our lives. So I think that mm -hmm. that's you know, definitely the way to, uh, to approach Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Now, David, uh, I want to ask you, um, I know that there are certain things that are in your calendar, uh, going to your practice, doing your show at the scheduled time that it's going to go on. But there are other aspects of our life that we're uh, finding it hard not to be able to plan for. How is that affecting you in terms of looking, let's say, six months ahead of us right now? I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to say that I've fallen very comfortable into doing this virtual you know, world, um, I've actually learned to love it. Um, but there is the fear that there's nothing on the books out there. I mean, what's, what's out there, what's coming up? Um, what does it all look like? You know, this isn't just going to go away, um, because there's a vaccine and all that stuff. I, I, I um, there's there's a there's also that balance of am I doing enough? Am I overexposing? Are people really going to be interested? Have I given it all away? Um, are people going to really want to, you know, be there? And I like to believe that people are going to be so excited to see people in person, see performers, hear them live, people they've gotten to know. I mean, there's so many virtual friends. Um, they started as sort of imaginary friends, but they're real. They're real people. Yeah. These are real people who comment and do that stuff. Um, I just, you know, I, my fears are almost more for, you know, six months from now, you asked, right? Mm -hmm. I I worry about, you know, is, is this really going, are we going to, Cup, get our heads around this? Are we going to come together and take care of each other? I'm actually, I've gotten my second vaccine shot. I've been very lucky right. because of working, you know, in a medical practice where I'm, you know, indirect, direct, indirect. Connecticut has really um, done a very good job at rolling out the program. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't change how I live at all. I'm still masked. I'm still distanced. We don't, you know, it, it, we don't know that it doesn't reduce my transmissibility as far as we know right now but um i you know i it's a tough question i i i, I feel very there've been offers and people starting to put things on the books and i feel like that person that oh my god do i know how to do that on a stage again you know i've i've gotten very comfortable behind my computer i've gotten very comfortable at reaching out to people's homes and phones and iPads and whatever it is. And what does that look like when, when we get out there again? Very, very tough question, Richard. <laughs> you know, David, though, what, what, what you're talking about, um, this was something I wanted to bring up today anyway, was uh, the New York arts revival that Cuomo has announced, which is phenomenal. Um, they're going to, it starts February 4th. And they're going to be 150 artists doing pop-up performances all over New York, um, both in the city and in regional areas. And people like Amy Schumer and Chris Rock and Renee Fleming and Hugh Jackson are all on board. They're all doing these pop-up performances. Um, they're going to be doing test, testing people at the venues when they come in, doing rapid COVID mm -hmm. tests and doing this as you know, again, as a kickoff. He, uh, you know, as he put it, you know, you can't wait for the revival of Broadway. We've yeah. got to start now. We can't wait for that. This is the time to start. And they're also giving grants to uh, at least uh, a thousand artists to begin with, right? And then, you know, uh, com community arts groups as well. And I think that that's, that's the structure, 
You know, it's it's starting. It's people. I think that we're going to see a real renaissance. Uh, exactly. Of all this. Exactly. And we're not going to wait around for it. We're going to make it happen. So I love that. Yeah. On the horizon, right? Yeah. So that yeah. we don't lose the time to do so, Stephen and Chuck. Um, uh, tell us about what you're doing now and what's coming up. I know you're working on the script. Let everyone know what's happening with the green room. Uh, as a matter of fact, tell everyone a little bit about the green room and how they can find it online. Well, the green room is a um, an off Broadway musical that Chuck and I uh, co-wrote with um, our collaborator Rod Damer, and um, we have a website, um, greenroomthemusical.com, and people can find all the information and all the songs on there. And in addition to that, we're also having our um, our little comedy short movie, um, the Little Johnny Dickens Show, that's going to be. Um, that's going to be shot um, in the next month, and that's going to be a dramatically incorrect. And there'll be more information on that as that rolls out. So we've actually been entering a lot of screenplay contests and um, just using this time to take our old material and bring it to the bring it to the world uh, mm -hmm. because we've been out on the road for three years promoting this independent um, film that we made. So. You know, that's that's what we've been doing. We've been able to put all this stuff online, which is a which is a good thing. In terms of the green room, uh, it uh, our first big production was here in Los Angeles and we got this rave review in the L.A. Times. Um, eventually, we uh, ended up doing the off Broadway uh, closed five week run right before all this hit just at the end of 2018. So we were incredibly lucky at that point. And uh we were able to, to go out there for the first week and the last week of it. Very exciting. Um, and now the green room, uh, we've got somebody in London that wants, wow, to, that's great. wants to do it. So we're really excited. Um, uh, in terms of that's opportunity knocking, uh, it's up on Amazon Prime. So you can just, if you have Amazon Prime, you just type in that's opportunity knocking. Uh, and um, so everyone go and watch it tonight. Yeah. Yes. 22 minutes. 22 minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and David, uh, what's coming up uh, next with you? Your next virtual piano bar is Sunday night? It's Sunday night, and um, uh, it is uh, it is one of my David shows. Liberace played last week, and he's going to be – he's going to show up once a month mm -hmm. going forward right now because it's a lot more difficult to prepare Liberace music than to – you know, just play and have have wonderful guests. And this week, I have uh, Deborah Stone is going to be my oh, special wow. guest. Yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah. Who's she's wonderful, and I, I met her at the uh, at Salon at Hotel Mama, and I, I think I played for you that night too, Richard. I was there that night, and oh, I, I I hosted. I didn't play for you that night. No, oh, I did. I, you no? didn't play for me that night. You did, but it was it. it um, that's really what's on the horizon right now. Is I'm just going to keep doing this. Um, and I think there were a lot of people who, you know, again, with the vaccine rollout and I, I don't know who said it, but let's hope that it picks up some steam here, um, that we get back on track and 2021, let's go. Um, but there are a lot of people who aren't going to go out. There are a lot of people who are, you know, can't travel and aren't anywhere near where a lot of us perform. So I'm, I'm going to keep doing that and I'm going to be very, very careful, um, and I, I can't wait to get on stage again. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it, but like I said, I, I've become, I'm lucky that I have an income besides this. Um, and I think if I have any, anything to say to anybody who's, you know, got a creative, a hobby or anything they want to do, you know, don't, don't waste, don't lose this time where, you know, where that's, you know what you do, like like Stephen and Charles said, it's like get up, work on that, work on that screenplay, work on that score, and do it again tomorrow. You have the you have this time to do it. I mean, I have to squeeze the time in because I'm working seven to five, you know, every day, and I come home and try and squeeze it in, and and I do, but it's you know, I I think everyone, if they just, we just plan to stay the course. And, um, you know, we'll see that revival. We'll see that. We'll see Broadway again. And I know it, that's going to be the, the furthest out. I mean, there's nothing, there's no better germ spreader than a Broadway theater. Um, you get one usher with a sniffle 
and you have you know you have twelve hundred sick people better next yeah. day, but but um, yeah. So I you know I don't have I actually don't have any live dates that are confirmed on the books. I'm supposed to go back to Mississippi for an opera festival, and you know they they love Liberace in the South. It's crazy, oh, but but yeah, I, I I just plan to keep doing what I'm doing, and uh, and I hope that everyone else uses the time to really look at yourself, look at what you love to do, try something new, try something well, new. I can't believe it, but we are at the end of our show. The um, show goes so fast. Yes, I know. Well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please tell your friends. Uh, Dr. Judy Bloom and I are here every other Thursday. Five o'clock is our new time. Uh, so uh, hopefully it's a convenient time for all of you. And if uh, your friends are not able to watch us at five o'clock, they can see us on Richard Skipper Celebrates at YouTube. We also have a Facebook page that you can watch it there. So please tune in. I always end every show by telling everyone to go out and do something nice for somebody else without expecting anything in return. Uh, most of you are watching us on Facebook. So go to your Facebook friends list. Go to the fifth name that pops up and reach out to that person and let them know what they mean to you. Not with an email, not with a text message, not with a private message, but with a phone call. Just let them know. As our dear friend David Friedman says, we're all in this together, but we're not in the same boat. So you never know what someone else is going through. So take the time to reach out. Now, before we end the show, I'm going to give each of you, um, and Dr. Bloom, I'm going to give you the final word, uh, to uh, say anything that's on your mind right now. It can be to expound upon anything that we talked about today that you want to build upon, anything that we didn't talk about that you wish that we had, or just any message that you want to put out to everybody as we embark on this brand new world and hopefully uh, a brighter new world. Uh, and David, I'll start with you. Oh, okay. Well, I, you know, I, I agree with your philosophy and I, and I use it all the time, as you know, and I, I do, I do actually give you credit, you know, show business, they say steal and don't give credit, but <laughs> definitely look at people, do something nice for somebody. Don't expect anything in return. You get what you get in return is way bigger than anything that anybody could give you. And, you know, I mean, maybe it sounds you know, uh, cliche, but it's true. It's true. And um, please keep wearing these. Find a great designer. Mm -hmm. We'll do one for you. Somebody who designs my costumes did this to, uh, to uh, you know, match one of my costumes. Um, just take care of one another. This is, it's going to get better. And it's only going to get better if everyone takes care of one another and gives, as I always say at the end of my shows, show that you give a crap about somebody other than yourself. So thank you. And thanks for being here. And Stephen. Oh, a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I, I would just say to every, for me, it's been a time of personal reflection and don't be afraid to take your me time and your personal time mm. um, through this because sometimes I know myself as a giving person, I, can overextend myself and go overboard on helping others. And I forget about myself. And that's one of the things I had to learn this year and through this COVID is that I, I'm, I'm a people too. And that I, by, by sometimes saying no to others, I can say yes to myself. And if I can give to myself, then maybe my well is, um, generous enough to give to others in a more generous way so for me i had to go in and i liked it because i found that there's a lot of rich treasures in me that i have been avoiding and not taking care of so that's that's the other thing i would say to everybody is take care of yourself too as you take care of other people thank you and chuck i guess i would say that uh in Previous to this disaster, uh, I had been living a very frenetic, fast-paced life, uh, going here, going there, uh, um, uh, talking to this person, seeing this person, uh, to, the, to, to a fault. And um, this 
uh, skidded me to a halt and made me have a very slow paced life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I learned that the, the right answer is somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so as I go on into the post COVID world, I hope I can find a pace in between those two uh, and not get into the frenetic life where I didn't have as much time sitting with my spouse and just talking like we did at the dinner table this morning, just about our childhoods. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I don't get back to the frenetic place where I don't sit around and memorize poetry, which is something I've been doing. I, I hope I can get a balance between the 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 fast paced life that I left and this slow too slow paced life that I've had to live. Thank you, and thanks yeah. for being here. And Dr. Bloom, it's all about balance, and that's really what we're talking about here. And you know, the Buddha talks about loving kindness, but it's loving kindness towards self and others. So we sometimes forget about the self part. You know, we get so. Mm -hmm caught up in just as as you know you mentioned Stephen just trying to be there for for others in our lives that's important too but so are we um so yeah find, finding that balance and being who we truly are letting down uh all that the guardedness that you know we put up automatically and that keeps us separate from other people uh mm -hmm. you know it's important to know what's truly valuable in our lives and what's truly valuable are the people in it amen Bye, everybody. Make it a great two weeks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.